Hi, my name is Ryan Reagan. I'm with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game Division of Sport Fish. In this video, we're going to show you how to tie an egg loop knot. For the egg loop knot, we've got a couple components here. We've got our three-aught octopus hook with a slightly upturned eye here. And in my right hand, I've got a section of 20-pound test monofilament line. For demonstration purposes, we're using orange. We're going to take a small section there of that monofilament line and we're going to just simply run it through the eye of the hook. We're going to leave a small, uh, short enough section here just, just beyond the bend of the hook. We're going to get to that section a little bit later. But for now, we're going to transition hands and using our left hand, we're going to use the thumb and forefinger and we're going to pinch that down against the shank. We're going to use our right hand, we're going to wrap, we're going to begin maintaining control of that leader section, we're going to begin wrapping a section that falls just behind the eye of the hook. Right, so you can see that there. That's my first wrap. I'm going to continue this wrapping portion with nine or ten additional wraps and we want to make sure that each wrap falls right next to the other one. We never want to wrap over another wrap. Okay, so again, if you're putting on a, a larger section of eggs, you might want to consider wrapping 12 to 14 times, but we're going to stop there. I'm going to adjust my grip a little bit. I'm going to use my thumb and forefinger to grab that wrap section. Okay, so again, that's just, I'm grabbing that so it doesn't become unfurled. Okay, so I'm adding a slight amount of pressure. With my right hand, I'm going to go to the end of the leader I'm going to come over, I'm going to grab the end of that leader, and I'm going to take that, and I'm going to run it through the eye of the hook. I'm going to pull that section out. What I'm looking for here is a loop. Sometimes your line can get twisted in there. If that does, that's perfectly fine. So I've got a small loop that I've created here. Now I'm going to use that here in a second, but in order to do that, I'm going to transition I always want to maintain pressure on those wraps, so I'm going, to make, I'm going to transition from using my left hand to the thumb and forefinger of my right hand. Again, I've got this loop here that I've created. Now there's a couple sections of this loop that I want to point out. One is the top section. So the top section can be controlled when I, when I adjust the, the running line or the leader line. All right? And then this bottom section here is going to be the line that is connected to those loops. Okay, So I'm going to take that bottom section and I'm just going to move it down. So everyone can see there, I've got a section of line that goes down there that's adjoined to the shank of the hook. And then I've got this top section of line here that can be opened or closed by simply pulling on the larger section of the leader. All right. So at this point, I like to use sometimes my, a combination between my middle finger and my uh, index finger. I'm going to take that bottom section and I'm going to wrap over the, the shank of the hook and that section of monofilament line that runs adjacent to those loops. This takes a little bit of dexterity, so if you don't get this on your first time, don't get too, don't get too frustrated. With practice, you'll get this down. And again, I'm going to go about six or seven wraps, and you can see I'm maintaining control of everything using the thumb and forefinger of my hand or the thumb and ring finger. In this hand here, my left hand, I've got this loop I've created and I'm maintaining pressure on that line using my middle finger. I'm going to come down there with my ring, and thumb, ring finger and thumb. I'm going to grab in my right hand the section of leader and I'm going to begin pulling that section to close that loop. Can everybody, I think everyone can see that it's kind of pulling off of my fingernail there and I've got these two wrap sections there. At this point, I'm going to grab that and I'm going to pull that real tight. I'm going to cinch that section down just by, by grabbing that front section of leader there. Now you can see here I've got two tightly wrapped sections. 
If I grab this, I can open that egg loop up. And this is the section where if I was going to be using cured salmon roe or some form of bait, I can put that offering in there and using this kind of cinch it down. I don't want to pull it down where it cuts the bait in half or, or destroys the bait in any way. I want to simply just add some eggs in there and cinch it down. Now you've also seen here that I've got a small tag end and you might be able to notice there are some loose wraps up in here toward the eye of the hook. In order to close that gap, take that small section, put it in your mouth and your teeth, and pull forward. What you want to end up with here is a knot that looks like this. Once we have this tightened down, I can take my scissors, I can come over here, and I can clip this section and clip that section away and I'm ready to fish. And that's the egg loop knot. Um, again, if you don't get it on your first try, keep trying. Uh, once you get this down, they're relatively quick and easy to tie. As you progress in tying egg loop knots, you can consider adding a second hook to the line by simply running your hook, by simply repeating the process that we went through to tie the bottom hook. So if I was going to tie another um, another egg loop on this hook, I would simply repeat that process. And again, as you get more advanced, something to consider. Hope to see you out on the water. Good luck fishing.